the thing is, it's not necessarily about creating total realism. You're not always trying to completely represent reality. For me, anyway, I want to create a reality. I want to put the audience in a world that they believe that appears like it behaves the way the real world does to their eyes. The light behaves the way it does in the real world. I like to create a world that the audience can be immersed in and can believe it. But it's not necessarily the world that I see out here now. That's especially, I think, applies to night shooting, and, and it's very hard to recreate exactly what night looks like mm -hmm. because your eyes behave so differently in low light levels, and especially reflected sunlight, i.e., moonlight, which is reflected sunlight, and moon does not glow by itself. You know, the color spectrum is always is pushed off to this green blue, but that's not really what's there. That's what your eyes are interpreting. I think it's a mistake in that sense to try and create something that's ultra realistic. I think you create your own version of it, really, how you interpret it. I don't really like a frame where everything is kind of so dark. It might be realistic or naturalistic. It's muddy and dark, and that's what you would see if you were out there on a really black night with no moon and a cloudy night, sure. But do you want to show the audience that? I don't. So it's your interpretation of it uh, that's important. What you just heard was famed cinematographer Roger Deakins sharing his thoughts on realism. I borrowed this audio, which I lightly edited, by the way, for clarity from episode nine of the Team Deakins podcast. His thoughts on realism are interesting. And to be honest, I've been thinking about them ever since I first heard them a few months ago. And I felt they were worth sharing and creating a montage video with and discussing in greater detail here because like some of you, I'm sure, I often look at the world of film and how professional cinematographers manipulate and control light for creative inspiration. And in the world of cinematography, Deakins is celebrated because he creates films which are consistently beautiful and cinematic, but without feeling artificial or overworked. There's a natural, almost invisible quality to his work. And by the way, that's a good thing because then audiences aren't paying attention to the lighting or the visual effects, but to the story. The images he creates resemble the physical world in that they look and feel relatable and behave according to the laws of nature, but they are stylized through lighting and color grading to mimic how we see reality. But not with our eyes or through the eyes of the camera, but up here, our mind's eye, the reality we imagine and recollect from memory. You hear this when he speaks about moonlight and how the moon that we see at night, if you go out tonight and look at it, it doesn't have color, but on screen, Deakins interprets moonlight as blue or green because those colors more closely resemble how we perceive moonlight, how we visualize moonlight from memory as opposed to what it actually looks like. And because his images use memory and interpretation instead of absolute realism, they have resonance. They connect emotionally. So whether you're a photographer, a filmmaker, a videographer, or all of the above, I mean, what can we learn from Deacons and how he interprets his work and, and how can we apply his perspective? I think the most important question to ask, if you're a photographer like me, sitting down to edit images, is what type of reality do you want to create? Do you want to be authentic and process the colors and contrast of a subject to create an accurate depiction? 
one that resembles exactly what your camera saw when the image was captured? Or do you want to interpret and skew the colors and lighting to create an inaccurate depiction? One that resembles your creative intent and what you want your audience to feel and experience when viewing it, what you want to experience and remember and connect with. For those who choose the latter, Deacons is an inspiration because he gives himself permission to interpret reality. Instead of feeling beholden to a particular color simply because that color is correct, he takes creative liberties and skews color to convey emotion and feeling in his work. Think about it this way. If all photographs and films of a creative nature were an accurate depiction of what we see around us every day, there'd be no point in looking at them or creating them. That's not what you want to see. That's not what I want to see. We want an experience. And in order to create that experience, Deacons and you as a creator have to look beyond realism and allow your interpretation to be heard. So if you ever feel creatively apprehensive, and by the way, this is very much me speaking to myself here, or feel your work isn't connecting the way you intended, perhaps you're holding back. Perhaps you're being overly cautious because you're afraid others may react negatively to your interpretation. Perhaps you've captured images which are compositionally on point with great lighting, a fantastic subject. And I mean, you did everything correct technically with the camera, but it still feels like something is missing. You may have done everything right and followed all the basic principles of image making, and yet the image still feels distant. There's something missing. Well, perhaps what's missing is you, your interpretation of reality, the one you want to see. I want to thank you for being here. I appreciate you spending your time with me for the past few minutes. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so and you'd like to keep in touch with me in the future, also remember to subscribe to this channel. By the way, if you would like to check out the Team Deacons podcast, which is what inspired me to make this video and is where the audio at the beginning of the video came from, I will link to it below in the description. It's a great podcast that is hosted by Roger and James Deacons, where they discuss you know, all things filmmaking, all things cinematography, and they also have some pretty awesome guests on their show as well. So definitely worth checking out if you're looking for some inspiration uh, to listen to. That's it for me, everyone. Hope you have a great week. I'll see you next time.